are some of the Diablo Range's most rugged places. Save Mount Diablo's Seth Adams teamed up with conservation biologist Joseph Belli, who spent years working as a biologist in and around Henry Coe State Park and what's now called Pinnacles National Park. Belli's book, The Diablo Diary, is a lively collection of essays about the creatures and controversies of the range. Belli and Adams hit it off right away. On one trip together, the two men saw Adams' first San Joaquin kit fox. On another, they drove deep into the night and found kangaroo rats, antelope squirrels, and blunt-nosed leopard lizards. Adams calls their excursions up and down the Diablo Range, after botanist William Brewer's famous book of the 1860s. They also went to Pinnacles National Park, where Belli works as a volunteer for the National Park Service. His job is to monitor the movement of California condors outside the park. In the fall of 2021, Adams and the Diablo Range Reveal team took a ride with him to look for those condors. How far do you think we're gonna range and in, in which directions uh, today, Joseph? Well, I'm thinking about checking out some areas, you know, 20, 30 miles south of the park, hitting some of the spots that are good for telemetry, but also giving you a chance to see some roads that maybe you've never been on. Adams and Belli are odd in similar ways. They both share a lifelong fascination with endangered species, and they're willing to endure heat, cold, hard hikes, and bumpy roads to find them. A night drive looking for tiger salamanders in the rain is their idea of a good time. Physically and temperamentally, though, they're different. Belli is of average size, Adams is big and muscular. Belli is mild-mannered and polite. Adams is brash and full of prickly questions. Belli answers each one patiently. What's your relationship with the birds? Are you a babysitter? Something kind of like a babysitter to a degree. Somebody that's trying to keep an eye on them and, and look for anything that's worth noting. Are these your children? Is this your family? I've always tried to see myself as just a conservation biologist. If one dies, you're not going to be but, destroyed? I mean, some of these birds I've been tracking for 11 years now. After a while, you get one of those birds that dies, that you've known, you've trapped, you've held them in your arms at times. And it's really hard not to get discouraged when one of those birds dies. We don't have to go far to get our first sightings. Standing in the parking lot at Pinnacle's headquarters, we tally a total of seven condors in half an hour. Then we pile into the car to see where condors may be traveling outside the park. As we rumble along, there's lots to see in every direction, with scenery straight out of the Wild West. We see big swaths of a shrub that dominates the chaparral up north, chemise. But here, chemise stands beside desert sentinels like yucca. Tule elk roam the ridges. Some of the valleys are lined with trees. Got a uh, nice riparian forest here of willows, cottonwoods. Have you ever seen a condor in this area? Yeah, they, they fly over here quite a bit. Occasionally they'll, they'll be down here on the flats feeding. So we're only about five, six miles east of the park and it's not at all unusual for them to hang out above here and to the east. We start seeing other birds that are unusual for us, including yellow-billed magpies and a roadrunner. At one point, we pass four eagles standing in the dirt. Two are golden eagles and two are bald eagles. It's always exciting to see one eagle of either species, and here are four just casually hanging out. Does that happen so. very often? Around here it does. Yeah. yeah. At another stop, we walk over a bridge to study a pitifully small creek winding through a baked brown landscape. A small pair of eyes peers up through the duckweed. Then we look harder. Frogs have wiggled out of the muck, and Belli declares 
They are foothill yellow-legged frogs, a federally protected threatened species. He wonders if this could be the first sighting of the species in watersheds just east of the Salinas Valley. To me, this is like seeing a hundred condors. When Belli checks later, he finds we're not the first. Foothill yellow-legged frogs were recorded at this same spot in 2018, so that's a disappointment. But Belli recovers gracefully. Let's say it was like seeing 10 condors, he says. Our tour route parallels the San Andreas Fault, the junction between the Pacific and North American geologic plates. Pancho Rico Canyon, to the west of us, is surprisingly precipitous, probably thanks to the dynamism of the fault. We're also near Parkfield, California, where U.S. Geological Survey scientists study earthquakes along the San Andreas Fault. Suddenly, Adams pulls out his phone and dictates a text message to some colleagues at work. San Andreas Fault National Monument. I ask for clarification. Let me introduce you to the San Andreas <laughs> Fault National Monument. How could you not want to preserve the most distinctive feature of the entire state? Visible from space. Adams is having fun with us. The private land around here is unlikely to become a national monument anytime soon, but he's dead serious about finding ways that his organization can help protect this land and its wildlife. Soon after our trip, Save Mount Diablo made a small grant to the Pinnacles Condor Recovery Project that paid for GPS devices to track more birds. And Belli started paying more attention to the daily flight tracks. In 2021, Belli noticed that one young condor from Pinnacles was ranging farther north than usual, flying around Morgan Territory and Round Valley. It was the first condor to be recorded in Contra Costa County for more than 100 years. A year later, another condor flew over Brushy Peak Regional Preserve. And on one day in 2023, 26 condors flew north of Pacheco Pass, and six of them traveled up to the flanks of Mount Diablo. Save Mount Diablo's assertion that protecting the Diablo Range would enrich parks in the Bay Area was looking pretty solid. I think most people know a lot about tentacles. The fact that you can see some amazing geological uh, formations, you can get some wonderful panoramas in that park, and you can also see condors, uh, sometimes very close up. Uh, and also in Pinnacles, there's a lot to explore besides, say, the high peaks of the caves. There are some really cool areas at Fort North Shalone Peak and then uh, some of the wilderness areas. And those are some really good hikes that don't get the traffic that, say, the high peaks might. Pelai also recommends taking State Route 25 south from Pinnacles through the San Andreas Fault Rift Zone. From there, it's a short distance to the Coalinga Road and the BLM Clear Creek Management Area, with destinations like Hernandez Reservoir, Laguna Falls, Condon Peak, as well as San Benito Mountain, the highest peak in the Diablo Range. Part of this area requires online permits because of sensitive plants in the Serpentine Barrens and naturally occurring asbestos. There are several first-come, first-served campgrounds that are rarely full. There's a lot of beautiful, wonderful land out there. Some of those areas can see stuff like badgers, like ferruginous hawks, mountain bluebirds, stuff that you don't see in the Bay Area very much. Those are some of my favorite areas.